How's it going folks? Jeremy Adrian here. Welcome back to the channel. We have a pretty sizable news drop with lots to go through. So let's get straight to it. Beginning with the Elder Scrolls Online who has shared more details about its next DLC Scalebreaker ahead of QuakeCon 2019 where ZeniMax will make an appearance too. This week it's all about the new dungeon story which they have touched on in a web post. Specifically for Moongrave Fane, we learned about the Hollow Fang clan of vampires that have captured a dragon and we'll have to stop them before they complete a ritual that drains the beast for who knows what purpose. This dungeon will also contain puzzle elements instead of the usual and to be expected design of having trash mobs and boss fights. Which is good to know and I've always liked ESO's DLC dungeons because they're far more interesting and challenging difficulty wise compared to their base game counterparts. We got a snippet of the new dungeon loot gear set, Drazakar's Claws and the whole DLC which contains another dungeon is on the PDS server right now if you want to get an early look. DC Universe Online has confirmed its Nintendo Switch release date this week from the San Diego Comic Con and it will be launching on the 6th of August worldwide. DCUO for short is a free to play MMORPG based on the DC Universe of Superheroes and those who have played the PC or console versions of the game, here's some information about what to expect from the Switch version. Firstly, you cannot use an existing account as all players will need to log in with their Nintendo accounts. This means that you will be starting from scratch, new characters on a brand new server, so think of it as a fresh start server altogether. Secondly, there's no crossplay on Switch, so you'll only be playing with other Switch players when the game launches, although the devs have said that they may explore the possibility of adding crossplay options in the future. The game will still be free to play and will have over 30 content episodes and 100 free game updates at launch. Next up, if you've been following the closed beta test updates for Astelia this summer, then get ready for CBT number 2. Berenson and EA has announced that the second CBT for this western bound Korean MMORPG will begin on July 30th, running until August 6th. As usual, all Founders Pack owners with CBT access will be getting in, but be prepared to get keys anyway if you don't own one, as we've seen them being given away frequently on your official social media pages. Astalia CBT2 will focus on Avalon, the game's PvPVE battleground where players join one of three factions to capture strongholds and strategic areas on a persistent map. It's a tri-faction PvP mode basically. This test will also let players take a look at the loyalty and cash shop systems and this is where we truly get to see how play to win the game really is. Pre-downloads for the client will start on the 25th of July. We also have news from Ashes of Creation this week, thanks to an update from the game's creative director Stephen Sheriff. The post, linked below, talks about the team's growth and what's happened over the last few months. And the one thing of interest to highlight here is that the game's testing ground, the Apocalypse Battle Royale mode, will return for a limited run of testing on August 20th, but no finalized dates mentioned for the other modes like Horde and Siege. This is, of course, building up to the MMORPG's Alpha 1, and to that end, they have some insights about one of the game's core features, the mayoral caravan system. MCS, for short, interacts with the game's node system, allowing mayors to establish trade with nearby cities, extend diplomatic relationships with other nodes, and create opportunities for conflict and cooperation. Intrepid has a video about this that's worth watching if you're a backer and want to learn more about what's coming to the MMORPG. Moving on, Caravan Stories, the much-anticipated MMO on the PlayStation 4 for the North America region has unfortunately been delayed. In an official tweet, the game says that more time was needed to ensure a polished gameplay experience, but no replacement date was given for the open beta which was originally scheduled to take place this month with launch happening shortly after. For those that don't know, Caravan Stories is a free-to-play anime-inspired MMO with over 2 million players in Japan alone. The game has open world dungeons and raids and a combat system that allows you to recruit companions, both creatures and allies, to overcome the dangers in the world of ER. While we're on the subject of delays, here's another one. Eternal Magic, the traditional looking MMORPG from China, which we talked about in last week's news drop, is delaying its closed beta test, moving into September this year. According to the devs, more time for internal testing was needed to guarantee server optimization and improve the game's localization, which are all fair reasons because much of our first impressions rely on those things in addition to the gameplay itself. And on that note, there's been some gameplay videos already out 
and from watching it myself, it doesn't look all that promising, as it has auto combat features reminiscent of mobile MMOs, and the graphics are nowhere near good enough for me personally. Anyway, those who have bought early access packs specifically for the CBT access, you will be given some freebies as an apology token when the open beta arrives in the form of currency. Up next, Sandbox MMORPG Albion Online is celebrating an anniversary this week, and good news for all players, you will be given free gifts. Sandbox Interactive has sent out a new anniversary banner, which is a furniture item, in addition to fireworks for players who have accounts created prior to July 17th. You will need to log in by the 24th to trigger the reward, however, so be quick about it. While that's nice, this is what you really want. The Mists of Albion buff is active, and it'll be up until the 24th as well, which grants everyone an additional 25% boost to fame from all activities. That means combat, gathering, and crafting. So now's the best time to get out there and grind your hearts out. Just keep in mind the buff does not affect fame earned through Tomes of Insight, nor does it affect the rate at which CP is earned. Here's something I haven't talked about in a long time. Life is Feudal the MMO. What about it? It's officially gone free to play. This is a medieval sandbox survival style MMO that's gritty and somewhat realistic in terms of gameplay. You'll build and craft, explore and survive together ideally, or solo if you're really good and have 24 hours a day to grind. When I first tried it out during the beta about two years back, it was very rough around the edges, so I'm kind of curious to see just how much has changed. The free-to-play model switch is apparently to accommodate new players to the game, and everyone will be given three days of premium subscription plus a ticket to Abella. Note, this is best play together or with friends if you have them, otherwise it can be somewhat frustrating, but check it out if you haven't heard of Life is Feudal, the MMO. EVE Online players, would you like to be a part of history? If the answer is yes, then now's your chance. Hadian is partnering with CCP for the Ether Wars Phase 2, which aims to put together the largest MMO space battle in history, with over 10,000 players participating in order to set the new world record. The playtest will take place on Sunday, August 18, and the link to sign up for free will be posted in the pinned comment down below. Now, if you play RuneScape, get ready for 72 hours of double XP bonuses. Developers Jagex have announced that the next double XP weekend will begin on July 26th until the 29th. And if you're a RuneScape member, you'll get a 100% XP boost for almost all XP sources in game, including combat and skilling. Just keep in mind there are some restrictions in place, like you won't get the boost applied to certain activities from the assist system or tomes of experience. If you are a free player on a free account, you are only getting a 20% boost, which kind of sucks, but oh well, what can you do? Onward now, and you may be familiar with Play With Interactive, a publisher and developer of several Asian MMOs on the PC and mobile. Well, they're in hot water this week for a contest that Play With Korea held for one of your newly launched MMOs, Rohan M or Rohan Online Mobile. I found this pretty interesting, so I thought I'd share. See, they're giving away a brand new Porsche car worth close to a hundred thousand US dollars to the winner of the contest. It's a 2020 Porsche Boxster, and the first player to reach the max level camp wins it. Now, this did not sit well with some players, and they have complained to Korean authorities because the game has microtransactions. Of course it does. That helps players to level faster. So, you can imagine just how much money was spent frantically trying to be the owner of that sweet new ride. The Rohan app even made the second spot on the Google Play Store rankings by revenue. So what happens next? The Korean Game Rating and Administration Committee is now investigating play with as of Tuesday, and the probe will yield its findings in a fortnight. Play with for their part said that they had consulted lawyers regarding the legality of the contest, and we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out. Play with, thank you for being the example that all other publishers can now point to and say, yeah, let's not do that. Elsewhere, Wizard 101, a classic MMORPG based on high school magical adventures, has some pretty good news for veterans, first-timers, and players who have not returned in a long while. The game is working on its sizzling summer update, which is now on the test realm at the moment, and the update contains some massive changes to the early game. This includes a complete graphic overhaul of Wizard City, a new and improved new player experience that will affect the first few hours of gameplay way past the tutorial, and there's a new team-based event as well. All in all, these sound like some much-needed additions to give the early game some new life considering its age. 
and I guess it will be worth a look once the update goes live. Anyway, if you want to check it out, again, it's on the test realm. PvP-centric medieval MMO Gloria Victus had a surprising update for players this past week, and they've shared some details about what's being worked on in a recent post. First up, horses and mounted combat is coming to the game, which is a much requested feature ever since the game opened its doors. This is going to drastically change the open world skirmishes a ton, I reckon, and it gives players something to look forward to. There's also free building and guild castles on top of a ton of balances and tweaks which can be found in the notes I've linked below. And last but not least, we head to Azeroth and the World of Warcraft. The WoW Classic Global Stress Test, which was supposed to happen next week, is sadly delayed until further notice. Blizzard has come out to say that it's just not ready yet, but assures players that the August Classic launch window is still on track. The global stress test will get a new date soon, which will be announced on the forums and everywhere else when we get it. And that's all I've got, folks. If there's news for a game that you play which isn't covered here, share it with us in the comments below. On that note, I'm out of here. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hit the like button for more videos and feel free to subscribe to the channel and get notified whenever a new video hits. Once again, I'm Jeremy Adrian, and I thank you for watching. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching that video. If you guys want to watch more, you can click the subscribe button at the bottom there or somewhere over here. And don't forget to hit that bell to get notified on all my latest videos. So I'll see you guys at the next vid. Take care.